BG coming live on a Sunday afternoon. Um, got a bit of building work going on in the background, so apologies if there's some background noise. Um, I didn't do a video last night because, to be honest, the boxing didn't really catch my imagination beforehand, and Mrs. Gossett was actually round visiting, and we kind of made a deal that I'd watch one fight. Uh, so I only watched Kiko Martinez versus Josh Warrington, but I've done a bit of catching up today. Um, I've watched some of the other acts and I haven't watched Calio Fire yet, but I wanted to to start by talking about Kiko Martinez, Warrington, and then maybe we'll touch on uh, our good friend Frankie the Frankfurt of Gavin and uh, Sam the Egg Eggington. Um, so Martinez, Warrington, I've just seen Warrington's post-fight interview on IFL TV and it, it's literally ludicrous. He, he said commentary to the effect of what more do you need to do to impress these guys, the judges, you know. Uh, won the fight comfortably, couldn't believe it with the draw, etc. I thought Warrington had a lucky escape. I actually scored the fight a draw. I had it six rounds each. Uh, and it was probably one of those draws where I thought it was more, you know, if you had to pick one, I'd probably have sided with Josh Warrington. Um, but it was a really, really, really tight fight. And I don't think you could really have it any wider than seven rounds to five in favour of Josh Warrington. Um, but, you know, as the... Um, as the fight went to the cards, this is Britain, everyone on Twitter was saying, uh, you know, very, very tight fight, could go either way, but, you know, obviously Warrington's going to get the decision, it's in the UK. And, uh, yeah, sure enough, absolutely, that's what happened. Two of the judges scored at eight rounds to four in favour of Joss Warrington. Now, Warrington did some decent work in there. Uh, he actually put long-range punches together better than I've seen him do in the past. He had quick hands, uh, one-two, working nicely. Um, and he was effective behind his combination work. Uh, I did feel um, that he would make easier work of Kiko Martinez than he did. The size difference between the two was vast. Kiko Martinez, I know he's been a world champion at super bantamweight. I've heard him say on previous occasions that he views himself as more of a bantamweight and physically in terms of his size, I definitely think he's a bantamweight, whereas Warrington is a big uh, featherweight, you know, there, there was a real size gap between these two, and I felt coming up to this, and although Kiko Martinez put in a good performance, I did feel that Kiko Martinez was approaching becoming a shot fighter. You know, we'd seen him lose several times, we'd seen him lose uh, early to the likes of uh, Leo Santa Cruz, Scott Quigg, and moving up in weight class at this stage of his career, I thought he'd be comparatively easy work for Josh Warrington, um, but I was actually wrong. Uh, Martinez was successful putting pressure on Warrington. I actually thought Martinez looked like he was approaching hurting Warrington on two or three occasions, specifically when he digged him to the body. Um, the overhand right of Martinez, which was a bit of a wild windmilling punch at times, was landing with great effect. And Martinez was having real spells in this fight. You know, towards the 12th round, the 12th round is the strongest round you'll see in Martinez's favour. I wasn't sure if, you know, Warrington's gas tank was empty and Martinez was you know, really coming on strong and just dominating him, or if it was more a case that Warrington naively believed he was so far ahead he could just take that round off from the run, but I thought he was getting a bit of a hiding in that 12th round, to be honest. It was not the most impressive performance, and Hiko Martinez, at this stage of his career, upper weight class, you'd be hoping that a guy like Josh Warrington um, would be able to uh, take care of him slightly easier. Got to say, credit to Frank Warren, um, Leeds Arena looked like it was full up, uh, you know, it looked like they'd sold a lot of tickets. I thought this was a key acid test for Box Nation and BT Sports. A guy like Josh Warrington, as you guys know, selling out arenas and that sort of stuff on Sky. Um, had he failed to do that on Box Nation, it would have been a real blow, but it looked like there was a good atmosphere. Uh, it looked like the crowd was full and jumping, so, so fair play on that front. Um, talk of this Selby Warrington match is mad. It's really mad. I mean, look, Lee Selby embarrasses this guy. If they fight, Lee Selby um, takes him not just to school, but takes him back to primary school. The the gap in class between Lee Selby and Josh Warrington um, is man v boy. Um, Warrington's an improved fighter. You know, I, I give Warrington credit because when he first started headlining shows on Sky. He was very raw, very, very green, very scrappy. He's improved a lot since those days. You know, he puts his punches together better. He's improved technically a bit. He jabs a bit better. His, his hand speed impressed me last night. Um, but it's about levels. There's levels to this game. And Lee Selby is a world-class fighter with world-class skills and world-class technique. And Josh Warrington, 
I'm afraid he just doesn't have um, that in his locker at this stage. Um, if I was Frank Warren, I'd, I'd want him to be persisting with selling out Leeds Arenas and leading the charge in Leeds. I wouldn't necessarily want to be sacrificing him to what is essentially a sky fighter in the shape of Lee Selby. So I'm not 100% sure that fight happens, especially when Lee Selby's got various other options, uh, potentially the likes of Scott Quigg, which is a fight Eddie Hearn's been talking about, etc. So, you know, we'll have to see what happens there. But but Warrington, I think he's uh, uh, at his level now. You know, that was a very, very, very tight fight with an ageing Kiko Martinez who was blown up in weight. Uh, and I think any more than that, and he'll probably get found out because there are bits lacking in his game. Although, to be fair to Warrington, to get a win over a guy like Kiko Martinez is probably more than you could have ever expected five or ten fights ago. So, you know, despite the fact that I don't think he's going to go on to great things in terms of world titles, I've got to say that he's an overperformer already as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and he has been in, become an improved fighter, so I give him credit for that. Um, on to the other side, and I was more watching the Box Nation build than Sky last night. I thought the Sky build was particularly weak, but onto the Sky build. Frankie Gavin, like, I mean, this is just, it's one of the biggest jokes in boxing. Like, I've been to Frankie Gavin weigh-ins at £147. Um, I was at the Frankie Gavin Bradley Skeet weigh-in for welterweight, and I remember just thinking, like, he just looked so bad on the scales at 147. He still looked flabby at 147. You know, Frankie Gavin should have never been a welterweight. And after his last loss, he seemed to acknowledge that. You know, he said that he needed to step down to 140 to have a realistic chance. So you've got a guy who fights at 147. He continues to lose. He continues to come up short. And his resolution is that he needs to drop down to 140. All right, fair enough. What does he do at? He weighs in at 149. So Frankie Evans' resolution to lose weight and to drop down in weight class, he's actually ended up blowing up in weight to £149 for his comeback fight. Um, I mean, there's learning from your mistakes, there's not learning from your mistakes, and then there's Frankie Gavin. I mean, this has got to be one of the biggest wastes of talent in British boxing history. Arguably one of the greatest amateurs that British boxing's ever had. And he has just failed to deliver time and time and time again. And you can see, like, when he's in the ring, um, you can see that still some of that class remains. I watched a video that Ultratech Sports did, uh, and he was giving him some props to some of the stuff he was doing in there. And I've got to say, Frankie Gavin's got some skills, he's got some smarts in there. He knows his way around the ring. Um, but the guy's just not, you know, maybe he's a, an English to British level title fighter at 147. This is a guy who should have been in the picture for world title belts at some stage of his career, and he's just never taken it. So for me, Frankie Gavin, um, it's just a disaster to see him waiting in at 149. It kind of tells you that he still hasn't got his act together, he hasn't learnt from his losses, and uh, unfortunately, uh, it looks like he's going to persist in uh, turning up to fights too heavy, not taking training seriously, not being motivated, and it's going to mean that his career peters out and is forgettable. And I've got to say, Eddie Hearn's been giving it large on various IFL TV interviews recently, saying, oh, we need to get together as promoters and make sure, um, you know, fighters aren't paid too much money for just low-level crap fights, you know, they've got to be thrown into real fights. Well, let me say, Frankie Gavin's one of these guys. I have no urge to see Frankie Gavin in another eight-rounder as long as I live. Um, you know, eight-rounders fine for good fighters coming up, fine for fighters learning the ropes. When you've got a guy like Frankie Gavin, if you need to give him a comeback fight against a journeyman over eight rounds, do it on the non-televised portion of the bill, please, because if you talk about the momentum killer, I mean, a Frankie Gavin eight-rounder is the epitome of a momentum killer, uh, momentum killer, even, of an evening. You know, it's enough to put a glass eye to sleep, it really is. Um... Sam Eggington, um, he won by uh, stoppage last night, I believe. Barry Hearn afterwards saying uh, time to put him in with a guy like Danny Garcia. Um, look, Danny Garcia decapitates Sam Eggington if they fight. Um, the gap in levels is huge. Eggington, he's actually a guy I hold in similar esteem to Josh Warrington, a guy who has massively overperformed given his natural attributes. A guy who has massively overperformed given some of the form he showed early on in his career. Um, and a guy who's become a likeable fighter. You know, he's got bigger wins than I ever expected he'd get on his resume. The likes of 
uh, Paulie Malignaggi, uh, the likes of Frankie Gavin. You know, these are names that Sam Higginson shouldn't have on his resume, uh, but he's got them, and he's got them at a very, very early age. So. All the credit in the world to Sam Eggington. Um, he's a very much an improved fighter. He's a likeable character with a likeable story. Um, but putting him in in front of Danny Garcia, I'm afraid, is going to be like sending a man in front of a firing squad. You know, uh, Sam Eggington has uh, one of the most porous defences you're ever likely to see. Um, you know, he was eating bombs off. You know, he, he actually made guys like Frankie Gavin and Paulie Malignaggi look like power punches at times because the way they were landing haymakers on him. Uh, yeah, a guy like Danny Garcia, I know Garcia hasn't shown the same knockout power at 147 as he has you know, when he was in lower weight classes, uh, but a guy like Danny Garcia has just got that timing and his power is a different level to the likes of fighters that uh, Eggington's been in with. You know, if, if Eggington goes in front of Danny Garcia, um, I, I think it's a, a stoppage for Garcia in the early rounds of that fight, I'm afraid. Um, interesting stuff, really. The, the Birmingham cards, you know, I know I, I appreciate that it's good. Birmingham's obviously the second city in the UK. That group of fighters, you know, the Afai brothers, Eggington, Frankie Gavin, um, there's very limited personality between the whole set of them, you know, and whenever there's a bill in Birmingham, I, I kind of fail to get up for it if I'm completely honest and that's that's no disrespect to the region as a whole it's just that the fighters aren't really A-list personalities and A-list stylists so Kalia Fai may, may turn out to be a elite world class fighter you know he looks very 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 good in terms of what he's showing in the ring um, but I just find his performances very forgettable I'm afraid and I, I, I'm sorry maybe that's not me not being hard enough uh, hardcore enough but it's kind of true he's just someone who's never really caught my imagination and I know I'm not the only one who feels that way so I was with uh, Frank Warren's bill last night um, as I say actually turned out to be a fairly decent fight that could have gone either way between Kiko and Josh Warrington um, but those are just some brief thoughts I won't ramble on too much because as I say I only kind of half watched the boxing last night um but I wanted to get some brief thoughts out and uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts on this people. Um, do drop me a comment in the section below. How did you score Kiko Martinez Warrington? Uh, was Kiko robbed? Is this another case of bad British judging or was it there or thereabouts, right? Uh, let me know your thoughts on the Birmingham Bill, Califoy, Sam Eggington, Frankie Gavin. Uh, leave your comments in the section below. If you've enjoyed the video, take the time to hit the thumbs up so it gets more visibility. And uh, if you like what I'm doing, press subscribe so you can check out all of my other stuff. Uh, as always, appreciate you guys tuning in.